Okay, Psalm 16 of Mitchum is called Prayer or Meditation of David. So you can sing your prayer. Preserve me. And preserve is when you put something up. And for preserving some foods, vegetables, and fruit, you got to crush it. You got to heat it up. That's what sometimes <coughs> our life is. There's heat. There's crushing. There's tribulation, trials, and anguish. That's to help us grow. Preserve is the key. You put it inside a jar and you seal the jar. That's the sealing of our salvation. Preserve me, O God. And that's what we want. God. For in thee do I put my trust. And that's all we all put our trust in. God. Now the, the main frame of this chapter is God and the person of God. That God, I want you to preserve me. I want you to keep me. I don't want you to lose me, which you won't. I, I trust you, Lord. I trust in you keeping me. Oh, my soul, that's your eternal part. Thou hast said unto the Lord. Our soul speaks. Thou art my Lord. My soul, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. My soul. If the Lord would tarry with the rapture, I'd die. My soul leaves his body, is absent from the body, and present with the Lord. It belongs to God. If you're unsaved, your soul goes into hell. It's not kept. Perish. Hell is, is, in a plain simple sense, God's incinerator. Perish is, when you take something out, it's it's old, it's, it's beyond expiration date. It has been opened. The seal has been broken. It's no good no more. And you throw it out. You throw it to the dump and incinerate it. I'm never going to perish because God preserved me. He sealed me. And my soul says to God, I'm yours. My goodness extends not to thee, but to the saints. In a Catholic church, you're going to see Catholic in this thing. We're going to, Catholics believe, you know, once you die, if you're a rectable, workable Catholic of a good standing, they will will Satanize you. That's a bunch of that's a bunch of garbage. Because I'm a saint living and live and well. I'm a child of God and I'm a saint of God. To the excellent in whom all in whom is all my delight. Again, it's God. Their sorrows, and we have sorrows, shall be multiplied that hasten after another. God, that's important. God, verse 1, capital G. God in verse 4, a small g. And the Bible honors that there is God the Father and there are other gods out there. The Bible honors that there's Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, who is God. And Paul says, yet yeah, there's another Jesus out there. So verses 1 and 2, God the Father a, a child of God, a follower of God, is preserved by God. That person puts their trust in the preservation of God. Their soul belongs to God. Verse 3, there, there's people who have. Oh, it, it, verse 3, it's the saints. Those are stew of God. And they're still walking with God. And verse 4, you get God. Small g. And there are sorrows. Jesus said there will be a dark place. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You can't imagine a place called hell where there will be weeping. There will be no tears because that rich man said, Oh, if I can just have a drop of water to cool my tongue. Well, if you're weeping, why don't you just grab one of those tears? You don't have it. 
And when we get to Revelation 22, the Bible says that God shall wipe away all our tears. In New Jerusalem, there are no more tears, and in hell, there are no tears. If a man in hell would have tears, he would take it and cool his tongue, and he won't. That hasted, hurry, after another God, not God, verse 1. Their drink offerings. All right, so they have drink offerings, which is found in the law. Of blood. Nowhere in the law... Nowhere before the law, nowhere in the church age, nowhere in the tribulation period, nowhere in the millennia, nowhere in the eternal life that's to come. And nowhere in the, in the eternal life that came beforehand. Has God ever allowed anybody the eating of blood? It has been forbidden in the law. In the Council of Jerusalem, they say, listen, we got we got a few few rules for, for those that do get saved the Gentiles, and one of them things strangled, and they're stained from blood. Before the law, God told Noah, "You're not to eat of that blood." In the law, you're not to eat of that blood. They're drink offerings of blood, so there's a God small g where they have drink offerings of blood. And when you look at the religion of the Catholic Church and you look at their catechism, they will outright, they will tell you that when they drink that wine, they are drinking the literal blood of Jesus Christ, another Jesus. They won't be ashamed of it. They won't deny it. They will tell you, say, listen, is that blood Jesus' blood? Yes, it is. And if he tells you no, he's not a good Catholic. There are religions in all over the world where they do sacrifice people, they do drink their blood. There are people who, religious and this, their custom of the people, they will eat human bodies and eat the blood of human bodies. called cannibalism. You're not a Catholic, you're a cannibal. And he says, they're drink offerings of blood. Someone's drinking blood to a small G-O-D. Gee, I wonder who that sounds like. I don't know why they don't have this verse with the catechism. So what does David, who loves the Lord and wants to do right, what does he say? Will I not offer? David says, I'm not doing it. So the Catholic Church will say, well, we're from Jesus and from Peter. Our universal church has begun with the steps of Jesus. Again, there's no dating of Psalms, but David is definitely B.C. before Christ. And David tells us in Psalm 16 that in his time, there are people who are offering drink offerings of blood to a small G.O.D. And they may be, it may be wine. And magic hocus pocus may be, oh, it's blood. Maybe it's literal blood. David says, I will not offer it. David also says, nor take up their names unto my lips. I had a situation one time, I'm not going to mention it, but uh, there was a funeral and the possession would be held at the Catholic Church. I said, I'm not going there. Because I, the, I know at the funeral they do the Mass. I said to the family, I said, respectfully, we'll meet you at the cemetery. Actually, that happened to me twice. One time, one of the families, I, I got the wrong cemetery. and I apologize, but the husband really respected me. He knew where I stood. I think he, I think he may be saved Catholic. I, I, one of those things I don't know. But I'm not even going to go, I'm not even going to go to a place and take part where they're going to say, we're drinking and eating my Jesus. They say it's my, it's not my Jesus. You say you're wrong. David said, I'm not even going to offer their blood off. I'm not even going to take part. Now, when I take part in the Lord's Supper in the Baptist church, we, tar we take part of a piece of bread, hopefully unleavened. And then we have grape juice. And the pastor will get up in the pulpit or get up aside with, with, with a Bible and say, 
This is not the body of Christ. This is not the blood of Jesus. It's symbolic. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. It's symbolic of what his flesh is. And the grape juice is the natural form of a fruit of the grape that it typifies, but is not the blood, but it shows the blood of the suffering and the death and the brutality to the body of Jesus and to God's blood that's spilt out. Are we taking part in this thing for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus until he comes again? And if I go into a church and they do whatever, say, this is the body, this is the blood, I hope I have a ner nerve to get out of that seat and get out. And if I find a church I go into, okay, this is not the body and blood of Jesus Christ, and I take that that, that juice and I sniff it and I, I find out it's alcohol, I'm going to put it down and I'm going to leave. Because alcohol has been fermented. Now, when I tried to start a church in Norwich, I, this is what I did. We took part of the Lord's Supper a couple of times. We went and got grapes at the store, fresh grapes, and we got a juicer, and we made fresh grape juice. The freshest we can get. We washed them and everything. I'm not saying, you know, if you buy the juices, I'm not saying it's wrong. I just felt, let's have grapes. And kind of mechanically made it. Nehemiah took the grapes for the king and pressed them in the king's cup. The butler... And, and Genesis before Pharaoh took the grapes and pressed them in the cup. But there is the Catholic Mass right there, 16.4. David says, I'm having no part of it. I'm not even going to lift up your Jesus' name. If he were in a Catholic. Listen, if, they, if these men, David and Paul and Peter and, and Jesus, man, they'd be tipping the Catholic Church upside down. Paul would be rebuking them on the, on the steps of the Catholic Church. Why are we not? I'll step out sometimes the Catholic Church. I'll step out on the sidewalk in that church. And I will proclaim the truth to them. Same thing Martin Luther did. I'm not going to nail it to their door. But I'm going to proclaim. The Lord, that's Jehovah, is the portion of my inheritance. I'm not going to have anything to do with that God they drink. And my cup. Now, when Jesus sat there with the disciples up in the upper room, he said, take this bread, eat it, it is my body. And it's not his body, his body's sitting there at the table. He didn't break off pieces of him. And then when Jesus said about the wine, he didn't say, here, take this wine and divide it among you. This is my blood. He said the cup. He didn't say the wine. And the Holy Spirit here said, my cup. Thou maintainest my life. When Jesus is in the garden, he says, Lord God, the Father, oh, I pray that this cup would pass for me. This is a messianic psalm they call Psalm 16. This is Jesus saying, not I'm afraid of death, God. But I know what that cup is. That cup is all the sins of all the world. I can't do it, but if I were to write down every single sin, Everything that I could steal, money, property, a wife, or, or whatever I could steal, whatever I can lie about, whatever I can have sexual sin, whatever I can deceive people, all that was in that cup. And Jesus told God, man, God, you don't realize how that sin is wicked. Listen, I was at a funeral, God. I prayed, I, I cried for, I knew what was going to happen. I knew he was coming out of that grave, but I was, they were so upset, Lord, I, I wept. Oh, I'll write that down. Jesus wept. Sins? Lord, I'll do your will, but if there's, uh. So we have a cup, we don't have the liquor. We have a cup. We don't have the blood of Jesus. We have a grape. I, I, I always wonder why grape, but wine. It comes out of a vineyard. The vineyard, the Bible, is Israel. I assume you would get grapes from Israel. If you're going to have the Lord's Supper, you're going to do it biblically. That's where those grapes would have came from when they made the wine in Jesus' time. Out of Israel. And then there's a religion... Not just the Catholics, but there's all kinds. They have blood. And some are to, to another Jesus, and some is to their Munga, Buga, whatever kind of God. And some people just 
eat people. There are tribes out there when they go to war, they go to war to, to kill people so they can fill their their icebox, their refrigerator covers with meat to eat. That's why they go to war. They don't go to war to get property. They go to war because I'm hungry. P, uh, David says, nah, I ain't having nothing to do with that. What are you going to do? He said, I'm going to have the Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintains my love. God, you take care of me, not that God. Small G O D. <clears throat> the lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, yea, I have godly heritage in his state. Now let's go to Acts 2.25 real quick. Acts 2.25. Blind. And look what Peter and his message to Jewish people. 25. David spake concerning him. God, Jesus, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Amen. You're not going to move Jesus Christ off, but some people do. But that's in their life, not in heaven. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also, more also my flesh shall rest in hope. This is what we're going to come up and read now in a moment. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. We're going to read that in a moment. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. We're going to read that in a moment. Thou shalt, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Now David is speaking about Jesus. I will bless the Lord. 16.7 I will make God happy. That's what bless means. Uh, Leah. Oh, I have a baby boy. Everyone's going to call me blessed. I'll call, I think it's Gad. I think that's the one. Blessed. Who has given me counsel? Lord, should I do this? No, I don't think you should do that. Lord, should I do that? All right, go ahead, do that. Lord, the men are afraid. Go ahead, I'll take care of you. Lord, can I do this? You can, but there's going to be a sound in the mulberry trees. Priest, will you bring me the, the, the Urim and the Thurim? i got to ask God something. That's what David's talking about. My reins, what's in control, like a horse. My reins, what controls me, also instruct me in the night season. God, you take my reins, and you want me to go right? I'll go right. You want me to go left? I'll go left. You want me to stop? I'll stop. You want me to go? I'll go. And Lord, when I'm laying down and I'm, I'm trying to fall asleep or I can't sleep, I'm just laying there. And there's a place in the Bible, I forget where it is, but it says, you know, I think it was Job. The Lord seals me up when I'm sleeping. He speaks to me, then he shuts it up. So I, when I wake up in the morning, I, I had no idea. David's like, when I'm at rest, Lord, help me, guide me, instruct me. I have set the Lord always before me. That's great. Because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. All right, let's look at now. Let's take David out of the picture. Verse 8. Let's look at Jesus. The Lord always is before me. Well, who's there before God all the time? Jesus. Because he's at my right hand. Who's at the right hand of the Father right now? Jesus. David is not sitting there where God looks over. Oh, hi, David. How you doing? David now is transformed his writing into Jesus and not David. And you find that in, in Proverbs, Psalms, right? He's writing about uh, uh, wisdom and she's become a woman. And, the, and he says, the woman, I use in chapter one of Proverbs, and she, she teaches in the street, she's in the, she's in the ways of concourse and that. Listen, there's no woman preaching on the street. And it's called wisdom personified. Here is David personifying 
Jesus. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Jesus had 100% body of man and 100% body of God. And when he's in that garden praying, there's two things like this, okay? David 14th, 6 p.m., I'm going to die. They're going to take me. They're going to put a spear in my side. I'm not going to feel it. They're going to lay me down in, in uh, John of Arameen's tomb. They're going to seal that tomb up. I'm coming out three days and three nights. I'm going to go into hell. I'm going to suffer for those people that, that I will purchase and redeem. I'll cross that 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 fiery gulf that no man can cross. I'll go over there. I'll get those in Abraham's bosom, and I got I got one man definitely waiting for me. I told him today I, I, I'll meet him in paradise. Jesus had the hope. The rest of the hope. He is the blessed hope. He is the conqueror of death and hell. For thou, God, will not leave my soul in hell. Now let me ask you, did David go to hell? No, he didn't. He had the sure mercy to David and to David and Solomon. God said, listen, you're my child. I have adopted you, David, and I am going to adopt Solomon. David could not, Solomon could not go to hell if they wanted to. Why would David say that? David's not speaking about David. David speak about the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they say, and there's Baptist preachers out there, oh, Jesus didn't go to hell. Read your Bible. When Jesus Christ died, his soul left his body. His spirit went back to God. The body was taken down off the cross and put in the tomb. His soul went into hell. How else could he get to the in paradise to meet the dying thief? What would he do with our sins? We go to hell because our sins are on us. Christ went to hell because he took our sins on him. He walked into hell. He said, okay, here's the people's sins for those people who would believe on me. Here's the sins of people who won't believe on me. Here's the, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the whole world. Where did he take them away? He put them in hell. And it's a foolish thing for a lost man not to believe Christ and have to burn in hell when over there in the storage area of hell, there is every man's sin. The Lamb of God brought it there. And Abraham says, no man can cross. Jesus walked on the sea going to the disciples. Christ walked on the gulf coming to Abraham's bosom. Hi, guys. Let's go. And the grave's open. You better believe Jesus went into hell. And Paul speaks about Jesus. I think it was Paul. Preaching to the to the to the prisoners, where are of a, of of Noah's time and all? Where would there be prisoners of Noah's time and Lot's time in hell? And you are seriously wrong when you say that Jesus didn't go into hell. That's how he deposited my sins. That will not leave my soul. Jesus had a soul. Neither will thou suffer thy holy one. Well, I, David's not the holy one. When, when Jesus Christ come, becomes the king of kings and the king of Israel, this is Jesus Nazareth, the king of the Jews. David's not king. David's the prince. Eze, uh, yeah, Ezekiel tells us. When Gabriel comes to Mary, he says, he shall take the throne of his, of his father, David, to see corruption. What's that? Jesus was in the grave three days and three nights. The body of Jesus did not rot. How do you know that? Ask Martha. Martha, uh, you guys want to open that grave? Jesus, yeah. He's been in there for four days, yeah. He stinketh. That means he started to rot. Jesus did not rot. Jesus' body did not begin to decay. So when they tell you, as soon as you die, your body starts, not according to the Bible. According to the Bible, Jesus, by unless it's, it's holy and right, that, okay, maybe a man does start decaying soon after he dies. Maybe that's true. Not the body of the Holy One. Did David go to hell? No. He did not. So who's, David must be a liar. 
No, he's talking about Jesus. Who else would Jesus? Who else would David said the Holy One that will not leave my soul in hell? That will show me the path of life. John says later on, John three thirty six, He that has the Son has everlasting life. In thy presence, God, is fullness of joy. Does God give you joy? Yes, He does. When we get to glory, you're not. You're not going to be able to fathom the fullness of the joy that God... It's going to be a joy that just never ends. And it's going to be a holy joy. And we're going to have a joy and glory that after after the great white throne judgment, that it just... There's no unjoy. I think we're going to lose our joy at the great white throne judgment when we watch family and friends get cast off in hell. I think we're going to lose our joy when we realize that that person get thrown to hell and we didn't do nothing about it. Or we didn't try hard enough. I said Revelation. It's either Revelation 21 or 22. That's when the Bible says God shall wipe away our tears. Our tears don't get wiped away to after the great white throne judgment. We're going to be crying and weeping at the great white throne judgment. When our family and friends and people we know are getting cast off into hell. At thy right hand. Who's at the right hand? Jesus. The Bible says, God at that right hand, there's power. God at that right hand, there's mercy. God at that right hand. Every single time, that's Jesus. There are pleasures. Whoa, look at that, pleasure. We're going to have pleasure in heaven. There it is. And, and Hebrews 11 speaks about uh, Moses. Let's go to Hebrews 11. I don't want to misquote this one. Hebrews 11. There's pleasures here on the earth. When we get the glory, we get that heavenly righteous glory and that unsinful glory. In Hebrews 11, 25. This is about Moses. Choose and read to suffer the affliction with the people of God, Jews, than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. The pleasure that you have on this earth. Woo! Look, look, we got roller coasters. We got beer. We get stone. We got drugs. We go, oh, yeah. We have a good time. And then death comes knocking on your door and you end up in hell. And the Christian says, hey, you widget phony. Hey, Jesus, he's a bunch of, uh, you, you, you Pharisee. You, you don't know what you did. I, I, mean, you let, I let my light shine. You don't know nothing about God. You're a phony. Shut up. Get out of here. I don't want to hear about you, Jesus. Oh, Lord God. Come home. You that weary, come home. That moment, open up your eyes. Now, I believe you're going to see the feet of Jesus. I believe you're going to open your eyes in death. You're going to see a holy feet. I mean, holy, H-O-L-Y, and holy as in H-O-L-E. You're going to see two feet, and they're going to be, oh, no, this is what I believe. You don't have to. You're going to open your eyes. There's two holy feet. You're like, whoa, what's that? And you're not going to, what's that? You're going to, like, look up, and there's two, two, there's two hands that are holy. Holy as in righteousness and holes that they got holes. The Bible said you still got the hole. And those holy hands are going to reach down. I believe because you're going to be on your knee. Hey, one guy, I'm going to go up to Jesus, my man, Jesus, and high five him. You are not. You're a fool. By the way, he went to jail stealing money. Great Christian. I believe he's going to reach those hands out. He's going to pick you up. He's going to lift you up. And then he's going to put his arms around you. You're going to put your arms around him. Ooh, that's a pleasure. In that moment, you'll never sin again. What sins is in the grave? We're going to be in the grave in a few days. Or action. Whatever they do with your body. And from that time on, oh, here I am. Holy, holy, the cherubim. There's God's throne. There's the green rainbow. Some people don't even know what I'm talking about. Read your Bible. And then once we get after the great white throne judgment, we've been judged and we get our crowns, get our rewards in Revelation 21, 22, the New Jerusalem comes down. Oh, that's it. It's just, what? What's it say? Pleasure. Forevermore. Oh, we go to this amusement park every year. Honey, yeah. I lost my job. We got to say, you mean we can't go have pleasure? No, we can't afford it. I'm sorry. You get the glory. 
Let's have another round of some hymns. Let's sing some more to you. Let's cast our crowns at Jesus some more. That never stops. That doesn't sound like a pleasure to you. You're not saved. Something wrong with you. If that doesn't get your goose pimple going, your goose pimple for Jesus button, it ain't working. You need to get it fixed. Because there's a holy and righteous pleasure, and that never goes away. And I can't even describe it. The Bible, you know, Paul said, uh, the Revelation says, all things become new. Paul's like, I can't even explain it when we get to glory. Glory to God in highest. Jesus went to hell. Deposit my sins. You don't like that? That's tough. 